Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 16 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about conflict detection property of object data source control. Please watch part 15 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial before proceeding with this video. In part 15, we discussed about deleting data from Grid View using object data source control. We didn't discuss about concurrency in part 15. Let me explain what I mean by this. If you remember, we retrieved the data that's present in this TBL employee table and then displayed that within this Grid View control. Now, let's say after the data is displayed in the grid view control, you know, the data that's present in the underlying table has been changed. Okay. Now, for example, if you look at the moment in the grid view control, employee with ID is equal to one, his name is Mark. And even in the table, the data, you know, the name for employee with ID is equal to one is Mark. Now, let's say someone has changed the name from Mark to Park where employee ID is equal to one. So obviously when we execute this query, the name gets changed. So at the moment, it's park for employee ID is equal to one, but in the grid view control, it is still mark. Now, when I click this bet delete button, look at what's gonna happen. The row gets deleted, okay? So in spite of the underlying data has, you know, actually changed, I'm still able to, you know, delete the data from the grid view control. Now, in most cases, this is fine, but let's say our project requirement is such that if the underlying data is changed, then I don't want the delete or update operations to work because we are effectively overwriting uh, changes that somebody else have changed even before we have realized that the data has changed. Okay, so if the underlying data has changed after it was loaded into the grid view control, then I don't want to allow that row to be deleted. Is that possible? Absolutely. That's what is the conflict detection property is for. We discussed about how to use this conflict detection property with SQL data source control. If you haven't watched part 14 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. Okay, now let's see how to use this conflict detection property with object data source control. Now, if you look at this, at the moment, you know, if you look at the delete employee method that's present in the employee data access layer, so this is the method which gets invoked. So if you, if you look at our web form, we have this object data source control. So if you look at the HTML here, the, the way it's configured, the object data source control has got this delete method. So if you look at the uh, property delete method, it, it takes in this delete employee method. So which is nothing but the delete employee method that's present in employee data access layer. And if you look at this delete employee method, it has got only one parameter, which is employee ID. Okay. And we're using this employee ID as the value for the SQL parameter at employee ID. So what is the SQL parameter? That's what is used in the query. So delete from TBL employee where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. Okay, so this is a parameterized query and for, you know, the value for this parameter is being passed here, which is nothing but the method parameter. Okay, so this delete query is only checking the primary key of the table. Okay, it's not caring about the other columns, that's name, gender, and city. Okay, even if these columns are changed, as long as the primary key matches, it's going to delete the row. So that's why even when we had changed the name, you know, and, and deleted that record, you know, it was deleted without any issues. Okay. Now what we basically want to do is we don't want to allow the deletion in case if any of this data has changed. Okay. So obviously the first step in order to achieve that is to basically change this delete employee method. Okay, instead of using just the employee ID as the parameter, I want to pass in, you know, basically the employee ID, name, gender, and city, all of these, you know, properties. Because if you look at the table, we have four columns here. We need to match all of the four columns. Even if one of the columns have changed, then we don't want to allow the row to be deleted. Okay, so the first thing is to implement that delete employee method with the four parameters. And just to speed things up, I have this method already typed. So let me copy that and paste that here. And then we'll go over the code. OK, so if you look at this delete employee method, now instead of one parameter, it has got four parameters now, employee ID, name, gender, and city. Now, if you look at the names of the parameters, now I have included, a, you know, this word original underscore, you know, this prefix for every parameter. 
okay so when the data is loaded into the grid view control you know at that point you know whatever is the state of the data the values for those columns should be passed you know into this method as the values for these parameters when I click that delete button okay so since we want those original values to be passed and to give these parameters a meaningful name I have included that original underscore prefix here okay so four parameters coming into the method and this is simple ADO.NET code okay so what are we doing here we are reading the connection string from web.config file and using that connection string we are preparing the SQL connection object and then look at this delete query this is what is important so if you look at this delete from TBL employee where employee ID is equal to at original employee ID name gender and city so we are basically using every table column here okay and then obviously this is a parameterized query and we need to supply values for these SQL parameters that you see in this query and that's what these lines of code is doing here so this is the parameter for employee ID name gender and city and the important thing to notice here is that look at this the value is nothing but the method parameter so we are using these method parameters as the values for these SQL parameters which are present in this parameterized query okay so whatever values that gets passed into this method are now used as values within this delete query okay alright so that's the first change change the implementation of this delete employee method now the next change obviously is to you know reconfigure this object data source control at the moment if you look at this object data source control delete method is delete employee which is correct but then if you look at the delete parameters it's only using employee ID because this is the old version so we need to include the rest of the parameters as well that is the original um, name gender and city okay now if we want we can type them manually here or if we reconfigure the object data source control they're going to auto generate for us so let's reconfigure that so configure data source so our business object is going to be the same thing now employee data access layer click next the select method is also going to be the same thing but then our delete method is going to change now look at this the delete method I still see the old one why is that that's because after we have changed the method we haven't recompiled the uh, solution so let's go ahead and recompile the project so build the project once we do that this class will be recompiled so now let's go ahead and reconfigure this object data source once again so the business object is the same thing select method is the same thing but the delete method is going to differ so delete employee now look at that we have all the four parameters there click finish and the moment we do that and then flip this web form to the source mode notice the delete parameters it's going to include all those values for us okay so with that change let's go ahead and run this so we have done two things now we have changed the delete employee method in our employee data access layer and then we have reconfigured our object data source control two steps now look at this when I try to click this delete button look at what's gonna happen I get an error that's because you know there are two more things that we need to do okay what are those we need to set you know the conflict detection property of this object data source control now by default if you don't set that it's going to have a value of overwrite changes meaning even if the underlying data has changed allow the delete or update method to override those changes okay but then we don't want to do that now we want to compare all values if they don't match then don't allow the update or delete to happen because the rules doesn't match so we have to set that property and there is another property that we need to set which is nothing but old parameters format string so if you look at this delete employee method look at the format of these parameters every parameter has got this original underscore original underscore prefix okay so obviously since we are using that prefix and uh, you know to identify these parameters which are going to contain the original values you know to identify that correctly by the object data source control you will have to specify what is that format for those parameters that you are using it's nothing but original underscore and then whatever is the name of the field employee ID name gender or city so in my web form I'm going to specify that so original underscore and then a placeholder it's 
it's as simple as that okay so three things that we need to do you need to change the method itself to include you know all the parameters and then reconfigure your object data source control and then finally set the properties conflict detection property and old values parameter format string property okay so those are the two properties that we need to set all right now let's go ahead and run this with these changes so at the moment if you look at this uh, you know employee with id is equal to 2 that's john now if i click that record because at the moment within the database the data hasn't changed so when i click that it should be deleted safely but look at this third employee is mary let's change her name to something else maybe um, sarah and let's set that to 3 update let's select the data back so Mary has been changed to Sarah now let's try to delete this and see what happens look at that the row doesn't get deleted because it doesn't match the name you know so obviously no rows are matched hence the delete will not go through and the grid simply refreshes with new data okay on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day